Something that I've noticed with aesthetics like dark academia and light academia becoming popular is that a lot of them consist of Victorian interior design. Because of this, I felt it was an appropriate time to make a dedicated video to Victorian interior design and talk about it, and not only talk about decor items that you can look for within your home, but also the history behind them. Because nothing is cooler than antiquing a piece of furniture and actually knowing the history behind it. There's also some crazy, crazy history to these items. And you would never expect it just looking at it. You look at a piece of furniture and you just think it's that, a piece of furniture. But in fact, there's so much more. I will be talking about an array of items from expensive items to cheaper items that are accessible for everyone. But before I get into the decor ideas and the history, let's talk a little bit about the Victorian era. When we are talking about the Victorian era, we are talking about Queen Victoria's reign from 1837 to 1901 and all of the architectural designs that took place between those years. Of course, after 1901, we still continue to see those styles bleed into recent years, but that is, you know, the designated time frame of Victorian era. When you look at a Victorian home exterior and interior, it is very much different from what you see today. It was a time of heavy ornate furnishings, oversized everything, a penchant for knickknacks. This gave off a romantic, complex, warm, dramatic, excess interior design. Their interiors were very much cluttered because at the time, this is how families showed off their wealth and social status in the community. You'll also notice that there were lots of dark colors used in the Victorian era, and this is because the Victorian interiors were actually meant to hide fumes released by coal burned to heat homes then. There were also multiple different types of Victorian architecture as well, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video. I'm going to save that for another Victorian deep dive, so let's just get right into it. First on the list is the folding photographic camera invented in 1856 known as the Bellows camera. It took around 15 minutes to take a single photo, which is why during this time most portraits the people aren't smiling. Another really strange and creepy fact is that they would normally take photos with the dead or of the dead. Next is one of my favorite decor items, not only because of the design, but because of the history behind it as well. So this is called a fainting couch. And if you're wondering why it's called a fainting couch, it's because women in the Victorian era often fainted from wearing tight corsets and they would rely on this particular style of sofa to recover. A parasol may look like an umbrella, but it is not. A woman with a parasol was a lady and would travel in a carriage in such a way that the driver would have to put down the top of the carriage so that the parasol was exposed. Generally, a parasol was carried by a servant to protect the wealthy from the elements in the sun. As popularity increased in the mid-1800s, parasols became creatively beautiful and multicolored. Even the middle class or the poorer ladies made sure that they owned a minimum of two parasols, one in white and one in black silk. The next item is a hall tree. In the days before mudrooms, most affluent Victorian homes had a center hall to receive guests. These spaces were usually decorated with chairs, tables, a pedestal to hold a plant or a statue, and a hall tree that was used as a catch-all for outdoor clothing and accessories. The next item is a marriage chest. Marriage chests, also known as kasanis, hope chests, or wedding chests, in Central and Eastern Europe, from the 1600s up until as recently as the 1980s, a hand-painted marriage chest would be commissioned by families as soon as the couple became engaged. The next item is a fan. From the 16th century onwards, the fan was used in a fashionable society as a means of communication. Women used their fans to convey coded messages that were understood by both sexes. By holding a fan in a certain way, they could tell a man whether his advances were acceptable or not. The next item is a hat stand. Not only is this pretty easy to find, but there's actually a lot of history behind it. Furnishings were selected not only to make it a useful place to hang a hat, coat, store an umbrella, leave a calling card, but it was also to show family wealth, social position, and knowledge of current styles. 
In the Victorian era, plants played an important part of interior decor. There were many popular plants such as Boston ferns, jasmine, ivy, philodendrons, monsteras, but the two most popular were the kintia palm and the cast iron plant. This is because when Victorian homes began to have indoor lighting powered by gas, gas lights produced toxic fumes that most house plants couldn't survive, but the kintia and cast iron could. This is why when you look at old Victorian photos, you will often see them posing next to their cast iron plants in almost every photo. If you're going to display plants, it's important that you display them correctly by putting them in a jardinier, which is basically a pillar style container. These were very decorative plant stands with a very elegant design. The next item is a pitcher and water basin. These were an essential bedroom accessory throughout the Victorian era until affordable indoor plumbing was available to the masses. It was common for most people to do a sponge bath in the morning using the water basin and pitcher. And if you want to go all out, you could get the furniture piece that looks like this that contains both of those things. I have actually seen these at thrift stores many times and they weren't that expensive. Next is a letter holder that was very handy in Victorian times. For the upper classes, receiving mail and writing responses was a major part of everyday's activity. You could find a brass one that's over embellished, or you could keep it simple and go with a wood one. Quilt racks were invented in the 17th century in colonial America and were often seen in Victorian homes. The traditional purpose of this item was to hold quilts, but it could also be used to hold other household objects as well. And if you were a quilter working on projects, this was a really good way to keep your projects organized. One of the greatest inventions of the Victorian era is the sewing machine, specifically the Isaac Singer treadle sewing machine. Not only is it a super unique piece of furniture to own, but it's also usable. Next is the lap desk that appeared sometime in the 17th century and became a stylish accessory for traveling gentlemen. They were meant to be used on a table and had a large storage underneath that was typically meant for papers, while the individual compartments were designed to hold writing utensils like pens, inkwells, and sealing waxes. The next item is a cheval mirror, also called horse dressing glass, is a tall dressing mirror that was made towards the end of the 18th century. These mirrors have a long history of use both as a household object and as an object of decoration. Next are East Lake chairs. East Lake chairs were popular from roughly 1870 through the 1890s, inspired by English architect Charles Eastlake. The first telltale sign of an East Lake piece would be the decorative carvings. You could see squares, rectangles, geometric patterns, and wood and oak and cherry. There were many different styles of armchairs that were popular during the Victorian era, but my favorite chair of them all is the parlor chair. These chairs contained elaborate carved backs in the shapes of leaves and vines, and typically in dark wood colors such as rosewood or mahogany. Next is a gramophone, and this is definitely one of the easier items to obtain, especially if you look on places such as eBay, and this is just a record player in the simplest terms. Early Victorian art was heavily influenced by realism and faithfulness to the true aspects of nature. Late Victorian art began to abandon the realistic aspects of early works and move into fantasy and mythology for thematic material. But much of the Victorian art created during the 19th century depicted women, particularly nudes, fairies, and landscapes were common. Next is a telescope. These were a serious research tool for Victorian astronomers. Often made of steel, bronze, and brass components, made this an aesthetic item to display and also use. A light fixture you would often see in Victorian homes were Tiffany lamps. This was a lamp that consisted of a glass shade meant to look like stained glass put together with a copper foil technique instead of leaded, which was the classic technique for stained glass windows. Victorian jewelry boxes were quite popular during this period and are much sought after even today. 
They were made of multiple materials such as wood, velvet, copper, gold, silver, and usually covered in intricate details. Most of them were just as pretty on the inside too. The next item is a mirror and a hairbrush set. These are so cool to display and they are even cooler because they're all made of natural materials. They are also decently easy to find at antique shops and are on the cheaper side. Another item are antique medicine bottles. If you are able to find these, they are such a cool item to display. You can also DIY these very easily too, if you don't want to go and buy authentic ones. Next is a Victorian sewing box, and I don't really need to go into too much detail about this because it's pretty self-explanatory along with the next few items. Next is a stationary set. This is very similar to the lap desk, except it's smaller and it contains everything that you need for writing letters. Next, we have steel pens, which were more commonly used in the Victorian era. The next item is oil lamps, because oil lamps continued to be utilized as a form of Victorian lighting, because at the time, kerosene lighting was really no cheaper than gas or electric light. And that moves me to the next item, which is candles. When it comes to lighting, it can truly make or break your space. So if you are into the Victorian design, I would definitely recommend grabbing some to light your space. And if you don't like real candles, you could always opt for the flameless candles. And since we are on the topic of candles, I wanted to talk about candle holders. So the first one is a floor candelabra. This is a beautiful piece and they are usually made of wrought iron, but I'm sure that they come in other materials as well. The next one is a candle holder and these are really beautiful for centerpieces or a fireplace mantle, but of course you can put them wherever you'd like. Ornate framed mirrors are also a must. They are usually heavily carved with bold decoration and can be in gold or in woods such as mahogany or rosewood. Another great item that you can use and display are old books. Next is a bone china tea set. Because for upper class Victorians, afternoon tea was a light meal served between lunch at noon and supper at 8 p.m. Coffee mills were a household staple in the Victorian era, and it was something that everyone needed for setting up housekeeping. A coffee mill or coffee grinder is a great decor item to have because most of them are still usable. So that is it for all of the decor ideas. I hope that you guys got some ideas for your home and you also learned something today. Again, let me know if you like this type of video because it's new for me and I would love to hear your feedback. Also, if you wanna stick around and be friends, I would love to have you. And thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next one.